The Blackmagic Cinema camera made a splash at NAB in Las Vegas when it introduced 2.5K raw capture. Let's take a look at what kind of video footage you can capture with this camera and what accessories you might need to maximize its potential. Let's start with the basics. The cinema camera comes in two models, one with a passive micro four thirds mount, which means it's for manual lenses, and one with a Canon EF mount that supports electronic iris control. Other than the mount, both models are exactly the same. Now, one of the most distinguishing characteristics about a camera is its sensor size. The Blackmagic Cinema Camera has about a 2.4x crop factor compared to a full-frame video sensor. It's bigger than a Super 16, but smaller than Micro Four Thirds or Super 35. So my initial concern was low-light performance. Typically, smaller sensor cameras won't perform as well in low-light situations, but the Cinema Camera has 13 stops of dynamic range. A DSLR like a Canon 7D or a Nikon D7000 has around 10 or 11 on the video side. So after combing through some nighttime footage, I was pretty impressed with how the cinema camera handled itself. Now, this camera can shoot video up to 2.5K resolution, recording 12-bit raw DNG files. These uncompressed DNG files have a higher resolution than HD video and carry much more color data than you get with most file formats, giving you a ton of flexibility and creative control in post-production. The downside is that video recorded this way tends to look washed out until you color correct it. So if you're looking to do a lot of color grading or processing after the fact, these raw files will give you the freedom you might be looking for. However, for a more pleasing image right out of camera, try the ProRes or DNX HD options. They record in 1920 by 1080 and are compatible with most popular post-production software like Final Cut Pro. While the cinema camera can produce beautiful images, you may need to budget for post-production support and additional accessories to really make it useful to the professional photographer. The good news is, the Blackmagic Cinema Camera does come with DaVinci Resolve color grading software, and that's a huge plus. It's remarkable to get this kind of image data and control at this price point. The back of the camera is mostly taken up by the LCD touchscreen. This works as a viewfinder and lets you navigate the menu system. Around the view screen, you'll see some actual buttons. Both the menus and the buttons on the cinema camera are pretty basic and easy to navigate. For example, you'll see an iris button on the top left corner. If you point your lens at the scene you want to capture and press that button, the camera will determine what f-stop will expose the scene properly. But DSLR and ProVideo users are going to say, where are all my manual controls? Well, with the EF version and most EF lenses, you can't dial it in and choose how large or small you want the iris opening to be set at. The Micro Four Thirds mount camera has a passive mount, so with that model, the iris control is completely manual. In the upper right corner is a focus peaking button. Now, this creates a peaking edge around the sharpest part of your image, and it can help you find the proper focus. And one easy way to check your focus is to zoom in by just double tapping the screen. Inside the menu system, you'll find settings for the camera, audio, recording, and display. In the camera settings menu, you can find adjustments for ISO and shutter angle. Now, shutter angle is a little different than shutter speed, so if you're not familiar with it, I suggest you take a look at the camera manual. The ISO settings range from 200 to 1600 ASA, which is a film speed term and interchangeable with ISO. You'll see color temperature white balance options here too. Now, there's no auto mode, so if you're used to working in a situation where the camera controls all of your settings, understand that you do need to go in and adjust these settings to capture properly exposed and balanced video. Audio recording is one place where this camera has come under some criticism. It has quarter-inch audio jacks for two lines of audio input, and you can control the inputs in the audio settings menu. But many videographers working with professional XLR audio equipment will need an adapter to use their pro equipment. Plus, the fan noise on this camera is noticeable, and if you have a microphone attached to the top or very close by, you might pick it up. Under the Recorder Settings menu, you can choose the format you want to record in. And if you choose the ProRes or DNX HD formats, you'll find two dynamic range settings to choose from, film or video. 
The film setting creates more cinematic video using a long curve with the 13 stops of dynamic range, while the video option is more of a typical high definition setting that you might use if you're not planning to use any color grading software. Here you can also choose a frame rate option. The Blackmagic Cinema Camera will shoot at true 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, or it also shoots in drop frame time code, so it'll match up with the video shot on a DSLR or camcorder. You'll even find time lapse options in the recorder settings. Finally, the display menu gives you control over the display itself LCD brightness, zebra, SDI overlays, and dynamic range. Now, the dynamic range setting only applies to what you see on the display. So if you're shooting in 2.5K RAW format and you want to get an idea of what the footage will look like once the color grading is complete, you can switch the display to video. Now remember the cinema camera's LCD screen that we're looking at is a touch screen and it's the only way to navigate through the settings. But even with the attached hood, it's highly reflective and difficult to see when you're shooting outside in just about any weather condition. If possible, I would suggest working with an external monitor just to have a nice, clear image to look at. You'll find three accessory holes on the top of the camera that you could use to attach something like a monitor, mic, or light. A playback on the cinema camera may feel a little strange to use. You can't preview the clips as thumbnails and you can't delete them in camera. In order to play through them, you just keep hitting the left arrow on the bottom control keys. Along the left-hand side of the camera, you'll find a remote control port, headphone jack, the audio ports, SDI out port, a Thunderbolt port, and that's to capture video to your computer or to use with a waveform monitor and your power input. One aspect you may need to consider on longer shoots is that the cinema camera has an internal battery. It charges fairly quickly, less than an hour for me, and it'll last about two hours depending on what format you're shooting in. However, if you need more time, investing in an external battery bundle may be the route to go. Switronics makes a good one. The cinema camera records to a solid state drive, and roughly 30 minutes of raw video fits on a 250 gig drive. If you are planning long shoots, you'll need to invest in a few of these unless you're able to dump the video to a computer during production. One little thing that kind of bothered me is that there's no way to tell how much space is left on that solid state drive. If you're shooting in more than one format or you forget to keep track of time, your production could come to a halt without warning. With no way to delete clips in camera, you'd have to dump to a computer before you could begin to shoot again. So this camera requires a little bit of planning. Map your shots out ahead of time and know about how long each will take. Minimizing confusion or mistakes in the field will help you maximize your drive space. And when you do this, you will be rewarded with beautiful footage. You'll also need to rethink how you use your lenses with it because of that 2.4x crop factor. Trying to get a wide angle with a sensor this small is difficult. On a DSLR, this Tokina 11 to 16 mm f2.8 would provide an ultra wide angle, but not so much on this cinema camera. Here's what the crop looks like with a Canon 16 to 35 mm f2.8. Now, on a full frame camera, this would be a nice wide angle shot, but with this cinema camera, it operates in the 38 to 84 mm range, more of a standard zoom, which is a good general all purpose workhorse for most pros. I'll pair it with a Rokinon 85mm T1.5 Cine lens and you can capture some truly beautiful cinematic shallow depth of field video. This is the lens that's going to capture fine details or emotional close-ups. Remember how I said you can't dial in the iris using EF mount lenses on this camera? Well, you can if you're working with a lens like this Rokinon. It has a de-clicked aperture ring. And while your f-stop number is not going to show up on the little status strip on the bottom of your LCD, you will be able to see the iris open and close on screen, so you can choose to set it where you think it looks best. Here's the thing about working with this camera. It's awkward and heavy, and in order to produce the best video possible with it, you will need to add accessories. Between an external battery pack, monitor, microphone, Possibly a microphone adapter, the solid state drives, and possibly a follow focus device it can really add up. And the affordability of the camera itself may get lost in the accessories you need to get the professional cinematic video that you want. Plus, there's really no way to shoot handheld without a rig. However, if what you're looking for is truly stunning imagery, 
with a cinematic look and feel, then this cinema camera will not disappoint. With the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, I'm Mia McCormick. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year, or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.